Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. This is our introducing series, episode 52. And today we're going to be discussing this awesome species, the black pine snake. Now I've tried to do this introduction three times already. And this guy is an adventurer. And he has tried choking me out about four or five times while I tried to read and have him around my neck at the same time. You made a rather tight necklace, didn't you, mate? So we're going to look at him for two or three minutes and then I'm going to go back to reading my notes so that we know exactly where we are without interruption. Just look at him. Absolutely stunning. Jet black, gorgeous. Dirty white chin on him. I'll show you, try and show you this his nose and rostral scale because he has a specialist rostral scale just here which we're going to mention later on so it's kind of important that we touch on that you are awesome aren't you totally tame not an aggressive bone in his body just a superb snake absolutely wonderful but because he's mischievous i'm going to pop him back and then we can get back to reading our notes in you go kiddo thank you that's enough trouble from you Three times, three times I've tried starting this video. So, now we've got that out of the way, welcome back to the introducing series. It's been a hiatus. I wish I could have done it sooner, but quite honestly, the shot's been just so busy, it's just impossible. Um, but, you know, we're going to try and get back to it. Um, I'm committed to trying to do it. It's just finding time. Uh, so, without further ado... Today we will be giving an overview of the much sought after but seldom seen subspecies of pine snake hailing from Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama. This is a close cousin of the northern pine snake, Florida or southern pine snake and the Louisiana pine snake. The nominant member of the species being the northern pine snake. Northern pine snake is Pituophis melanolucus melanolucus. Florida pine snake Pituophis melanolucus mugitus. Historically Louisiana pine snake Pituophis melanolucus ruveni. I believe that's been elevated to its own species now, which is Pituophis ruveni. And then the black pine snake, the species we're covering, Pituophis melanolucus lodingi. There is often meaning to the scientific names drawing inference from the appearance of the species or the habitat in which it lives. This is called etymology. So to break down the species that we're covering, the genus meaning comes in two parts. Pitis meaning pine, Ufis meaning snake. Ufis just quite simply it seems to be a generic term that means snake uh, and it's taken from the word aphidia or aphidian, a group of reptiles, the snakes. We have seen this word many times before in genus names such as panther, ophis, oreocryptophis, sam, ophis, tamno, ophis or tamnophis, not to mention many more. Melanolucus, the species name, is derived from a description of the nominate species, the northern pine snake seen here. Melas meaning black, Lucas or Luco meaning white, Milano Lucas, black and white. An apt description for the northern pine snake. In actuality though, black pine snakes much like black rat snakes and to a lesser extent Mexican black king snakes are born with a fair amount uh, of white or yellow obvious uh, in the saddling and this then disappears over time as melanin diffuses into each scale and with with only the chin and belly retaining a dirty white coloration this is a photo of a juvenile uh, black pine uh, that we've had in the past and you can see very clearly the yellow delineating the saddles and being very obvious yet on an adult not present at all What's even more obvious for the saddles is when we make it an albino. These, I believe, these came from Scott Hood that we had in. Absolutely stunning snakes. And you can really see the saddles there. And what we would expect with the albinos is that the um, oranges will diffuse through and strengthen to make it an incredibly bright, almost unicolor animal. <coughs> the final name, Ladingi, is an honorary name. This happens a lot where a naturalist is named in honour of their contribution to herpetology. In this case, the honour was given to Henry Pedder Lodding. Born in 1869 in Denmark, Lodding produced a comprehensive report of the herpetofauna of Alabama. And he was named by Frank Nelson Blanchard 
1924 when he described the black pine snake officially. Black pine snakes are endemic throughout the southern half of Mississippi, extreme southeastern Louisiana, and extreme southwestern Alabama. Their distribution is also known to extend into the panhandle uh, of Florida, even though it's not shown on the map that I found. Traditional forest types used by the black pine snake, although much of this will have changed with growing conurbations in agriculture, were longleaf pine with loboli pine and slash pine forests. This seems to account for the majority of forest distribution throughout Lower Mississippi. To the western border with Louisiana, this changes... Oh, where am I? Western border with Louisiana, this changes to far smaller areas of shortleaf, longleaf pine, upland hardwoods and slash pine. Then another band of wood changes to oak, hickory, magnolia and poplar. And then finally, bottomland hardwoods of oak, gum tree, cottonwood and cypress. To the south, near the coast and delta, it transitions to longleaf pine and bay savannas. There is a misconception that pine is toxic to snakes. It is not. A single species is responsible for this myth, the aromatic cedar, or eastern red cedar. And traditionally, pre-agriculture, much of the lower half of the United States was a mosaic of different pine forest and other wood forest types. The preferred ground type of black pines is sandy loamy soils which are friable meaning easily broken down. This is a specialist burrower which uses its reinforced and enlarged rostral scale which hopefully was in focus when I showed it you earlier uh, to dig burrows particularly noticed in females in breeding season. It is unusual for a snake species to dig its own burrow and other species will often take over rodent burrows for their needs. Therefore heavily compacted substrates are avoided. The pine snake will create a chamber at the end of the burrow in which to deposit her eggs. Black pine snakes are a robust species. Snakes will reach between 5 and 6 feet in length although examples bigger than this do exist. They do not grow as big as the northern pine snake, however, which is also the largest of the Melanoleucus subspecies. Some examples will remain highly defensive throughout their life, util utilising a special flap of skin, acting like a reed in the glottis of the snake, amplifying their hiss tenfold. A large hissing example of a pituophis is most impressive and alarming if you're not used to snakes. If worked with regularly, black pine snakes can become fantastically tame, such as with the adult male that we've just seen. Their appetite is ferocious, and feeding time is always welcome in a pine snake enclosure. They accept food with speed and power, so tongs should always be used to place dinner into the enclosure. Their metabolism is fast, with defecation taking place usually 72 hours after ingestion. <coughs> Excuse me. Growth rate is fast. Once the animals kick in feeding, care must be taken not to allow the animals to become obese. This is a very real possibility with such a voracious snake. Shedding take place without the need for spraying. This species will be quite happy at nominal humidity levels within the home. The shed skin is thick and tough, not wispy and fine like certain boa and python species. This makes it easier for them to shed once they have rubbed their snout loose to release the old skin. They produce a good amount of lubricant under the old skin to help ease it off, so skin sticking is unlikely. Unlike their northern relatives uh, that would benefit from a deeper brumation such as the bull snake uh, Pituophis catenophysei and the northern pine snake, this species uh, would need to be cooled rather than taken right down to 10 degrees or less. The more clement gulf of Mexico temperatures help to stave off the harsh winters. Median nighttime winter lows generally stay above freezing at between 5 to 7 Celsius, with daytime highs staying around 15 to 17 Celsius. And then there is a marked warming month on month, building to a summer high of 32 degrees. If you were to brumate this species, it would take place between November and February, taking them down to 15 degrees for the period of cooling should suffice to cycle them for breeding. So I'll just pause there. <coughs> so to look at the climate data and the arc, the uh, dotted line is the median. We've got daytime high, nighttime low. Then we've done daytime, daytime high versus nighttime low. 
rainfall which we're not overly interested in it's not a tropical species the four locations that we picked were Hattiesburg Mississippi Biloxi Mississippi Mobile Alabama and Bogalusa Louisiana peak temperatures get upwards of maybe 33 degrees in certain places with Hattiesburg which is in the north uh, remaining markedly cooler probably only about 28 or 29 celsius as a summertime high the medium high and low we can see we're down to five degrees seven degrees here and we start picking up pace really quite quickly and the parallel between daytime high and nighttime low remains the same throughout most if not all of the year with around a 10 degree difference between daytime high and nighttime low so a fair amount of heat is retained at night putting them in at about 23 24 degrees at night in summer so this is relatively gentle when we've done other species analysis for climate data and this is macro data it's not microclimate data there will be changes on a micro level but i can't get that uh, I live in Sheffield, so it's very difficult for me to get. So I have to rely on this macro data and I try and combine as many locations around the distribution of the snake as possible to give us the best possible overview. So I've kind of gone north, south, east, west and uh, taken the median from those. <clears throat> so general throughout the year, you want to be at between 28 and 30 degrees until you begin your winter cool down. They can cool down from 30 degrees during the day to uh 22 degrees at night quite happily and then we would start to reduce them down and i'd reduce them down as mentioned to around 14 or 15 degrees celsius for two or three months i'd have a cessation to feeding uh, i'd begin warming them back up begin feeding and then begin my introductions in spring for breeding <clears throat> egg yield is relatively low given the size of the snake but the eggs are very large as are the babies clutches from three to twelve eggs uh, are possible depending on the female pine snakes are not as productive when it comes to egg count as their cousin the san diego gopher snake which may have to up to 20 eggs incubation temperature would be around 28 degrees celsius for 60 to 65 days they do not need an overly moist uh, medium uh, in which to sit them whilst they're incubating but you would mix vermiculite to water water uh, by volume at a ratio of four to maybe 4.5 to 1. Babies are large and feeding is rarely if ever an issue, although a delay is to be expected um, as they're born with a large uh, yolk reserves and as a result a six to eight week week, uh, six to eight week wait for them to kick in is normal. So to discuss the vivarium style, Bob Applegate popularized uh, a design of enclosure with a subterranean level. These Applegate enclosures were popular during the 90s when the San Diego gopher snake breeding was at its zenith. Uh, if your animal is a burrow or a certain level of psychological security can be generated by the provision of a subterranean tray, preferably in opaque plastic rather than clear. So you can see just a standard illustration of a vivarium, just a bottom lip, glass, <clears throat> nothing special, completely generic. The Applegate design would put a pull-out tray with an escape tube down into it and the snake could lie down here and fall asleep if it wanted to or come out and bask, maybe get to its water bowl uh, and they did like to spend a lot of time in there. I know these tanks were used for years by a UK Pituophis breeder called Al Stotton who loved and rated them highly. It's not a hard and fast rule that you need to use a viv of that style, but it is beneficial. So I thought I'd throw it out there. Care must be provided to allow the snake to feel safe with opportunities to hide within the enclosure. Minimum adult enclosure size would be a 4x2x2, two two, with bigger being better, particularly with large examples. <coughs> heat should be provided either by a deep heat projector or ceramic heater running on a thermostat for accuracy. During daylight hours, Use a shade dweller or similar UVB source, which should be provided uh, roughly 12 hours a day. Substrates could be a mix of soil, topsoil, Irish peat or core, mixed with a desert type substrate available on the market, such as Leo Life from ProRep. And you'd stir that up to create this friable substrate we were talking about earlier. Or more basic options and generic options for substrates would be Aspen, Lignacell, Lignacell or Megazorb. <coughs> Sorry, he's tickled my throat. 
squeezing around my neck so i do apologize all this coughing fresh water should be provided daily pine snakes can be messy when it comes to fecal and urate production so a full clean out is unavoidable every month you're going to have to do it and that includes spot checking two or three times a week as well they can be quite messy pine snakes are not uh, suitable at all for live plant and vivaria as they will destroy your hard work in about 30 seconds flat and that's pretty much it as an overview for the black pine snake i hope you've enjoyed the uh the video i've enjoyed doing it and writing the uh the manuscript for it and getting all the details together it's one of those where i really do wish that i had more time to do this sort of stuff i do enjoy doing it and i find that there's definitely value added for the hobby um i try not to be too excitable or you know get all giddy like some other channels i just want to present the facts for you to use to keep your pets um this is information i found or generated or looked up researched so that you don't have to um we will be back soon with more videos uh thank you for the continued support at the shop uh part of the success of the stories unfortunately what's robbed me from the ability to do this but we very much appreciate the support and uh mad love to you all i'll see you again soon cheers guys